What's up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of 7.3 liter truck stuff. Before we kick off today, slam like, hit subscribe for me. Helps the channel grow and I feel it's something that you want to do. And if it's not something you want to do, I'm asking you to do it. Probably can't ask you to do it by some sort of terms and conditions. So I didn't just ask you to slam like and hit subscribe for me, but I did. <laughs> Intro. All right, what are we doing today? Today we are installing a coolant bypass filter from Sinister Diesel. We are also going to install a new thermostat housing and a 203 degree thermostat. Let's get moving. Here's something I wanted to show you guys. You may or may not have had an opportunity to see me change the coolant reservoir in an earlier uh, episode, but I did. And the one I installed was brand new and clean and couldn't be installed more than a couple thousand miles ago. And again, the 7.3 liter does not have a coolant filtration system. And, uh, and it's just whatever you pour in, just is what rushes around the engine. I've heard yeses and nos. I've heard people say that it's totally ridiculous to put these on, and I've heard people say um, as much as there's sand in the development of these engine blocks and that gets left in there, I, I honestly don't know what the truth is. But I would prefer to have something filtered than unfiltered uh, if it's not gonna affect the performance. The reason why I say all that, I'm gonna flip this camera around and show you what this reservoir looks like. So here's the clean reservoir. Uh, and I am noting that, especially with the remanufactured engine, just got placed in here a couple hundred miles ago. This is already getting low a little bit. Um, so I'm wondering if I have a leak. The seals look good all the way around. It's very prone to get uh, cracked right here. But if you look, I'll move this crowbar maybe now. Uh, if you look right here, all this up under here, this is like dirt, floaty crap. And that's on the inside, that's not good. So that's accumulated um, and that's what's probably rushing around inside the engine. And that is what I am hoping, trying to catch a better angle. And this is what I am hoping to filter out So we'll see if it uh, helps the longevity of the engine. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery terminals because uh, fluid and electricity don't mix and uh, that's fluid and this is electricity. Now that the batteries are both disconnected, I'm gonna loosen up the top here and we are going to flow the coolant from the valve down below. Okay, we've put a sizable coolant drop bucket in place and we are going to release this valve here real quick. Kind of looks like my truck's taking a pee. Okay, using a 9 16th wrench, we're going to take these two bolts, hook it up to this bracket. Done. Okay, the next step is to take a 13th, 16th inch or crescent wrench, a socket or the crescent wrench, to take this piece right here, which is called a quarter turn bow valve, 
and affix it to the coolant filtration block. Because the bow valve already has <clears throat> the thread locker involved, we don't need to go ahead and take the tape and put it on. The next step is to take these hoses and attach them to the quarter turn ball valves. This one up front here is the tube that has nothing on the front. This one on the side has got this kind of T fitting. Okay, we are taking this Wix filter, a little bit of coolant, and putting it on this O-ring right here, and then we are placing it onto this block, hand tight. According to the directions, using an eight millimeter socket, which we've got prepped, we're gonna remove these two bolts right here from the radiator support. We are going to place this entire coolant assembly down in this spot, and we are going to reinstall, but not make uh, the bolts too tight. They're just gonna be snug. So, righty tighty, lefty loosey here. That's righty tight. There we go. Okay. All right, I will consider that snug, but not tight. At this point, we wanna go ahead and check check this tab right here. So this tab down here was already there. It already was up. And this is the new mounting bracket that we installed. And according to the directions, they want to make sure that it looks good, that the bracket is properly placed on this rubber housing here and isn't hitting anything else. And it's not, therefore we will tighten down these eight millimeter bolts. All right, at this point, we are gonna break the script from the directions, putting in this coolant filter housing and start focusing right here. So when we had the remanufactured engine placed in, this uh, thermostat housing itself was the original. And uh, yeah, I'm not happy with that. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this brand new hose right here and we're going to go ahead and put a new thermostat housing in and a new 203 degree thermostat so this is the stuff you guys don't see when i like i'm <laughs> i'm actually trying hard to make this like a decent video right and i'm at the tailgate 
and everything's blowing away, right? It's blowing into the street. So I am cleaning up the street and then I hear this like slamming sound. I'm gonna go up front and I'm like, look in, look in. I mean, <laughs> how, how about that for my luck? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Shit. All right, here's the thermostat housing, and this is the belt. The belt is in my way. So after consulting the YouTube gods, I have been able to figure out that a half inch drive into this piece right here, there you go, and then pressing down will release the tension and then I can take this belt off. So I will do that now. Okay, the good news is the belt is removed and that gave me access to get this hose off. And now I'm looking down at the thermostat and the thermostat housing. Just a small point. <laughs> when, <laughs> when releasing the tensioner, uh, get your hand out of the way of this spot right here. It's, it sucks. Ow. Okay, the next step is to remove the three eight millimeter bolts, and I will do that now. Okay, so to be specific, I undid all three eight millimeter bolts and pulled out this thermostat housing. As you can see, yeah. Come to your own conclusions on that one. And uh, what we're left with is a thermostat gasket and thermostat. So we'll pull those out. And of course, those are basically brand new because this is a remanufactured engine. We're just going to go ahead and put a new thermostat in at 203 degrees instead of the 190 whatever that that was left with. Point of note, it's usually worth taking the time to wipe off the top here, keep that grime from coming in, any old gaskets and things like that. Luckily for me, I'm working with a very, very clean product. So I will wipe this down real quick and we'll drop a new thermostat in and keep going. Okay, so what we're going to do is drop in the 203 degree thermostat. And set this gasket in place. All right, very nice. Okay, we're going to take this new thermostat. Point of note, the uh, new bolts on the top of this thermostat housing shift from eight millimeter to 10 millimeter. So you'll make a small adjustment on that socket. All right, through the magic of editing, these three bolts have been placed into the thermostat housing. That is the 203 degree thermostat and the sinister diesel housing it looks really good <sighs> sadly i think only myself the mechanic and you all are going to get an opportunity to look that far down into the engine and appreciate it but the reality is i know it's there it's quality and it's going to be making the engine run better cleaner so i'm excited about that let's move on to the coolant filter and keep pushing through with that this is one of those times we're buying a large kit <laughs> of tools and accessories that you didn't need turns into one of those times that you do need. So this kit comes with a square 5 16th kind of just a thing and you're left with that. Well, it didn't fit into anything, but in looking at my tool set, I had a hexagon 5 16 and uh, that's what works. So. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, but I'm going to unscrew the side here of this thermostat housing. 
Okay, so this piece right here is what was backed into the thermostat housing. And you can see it's hex, hex, hexagonal, whatever, hex in shape. And what Sinister Diesel gives you is this piece right here, which I get it. I guess it fits in. Maybe not. I don't know. I'll tell you what does fit though. This 516th. And maybe it was an aftermarket piece that they put in. I don't I don't know. Guys, I'm just telling you that this is what worked for me. So putting this piece in, I was able to back this out of the thermostat housing. And this is what's getting ready to go in. Okay, so I am going to put the sealant hose barb in this location right here. Okay, so it took a uh, adjustable wrench because the socket was just too, uh, too long to fit up against that brace right there. So it doesn't look pretty, but I got her in. Uh, it wasn't hard, it just took a minute. Um, so definitely having a appropriately sized wrench is what you need here. I am gonna put, here we go, this puppy back on to this thermostat housing and get that secure and then start hooking up the hoses from the coolant bypass. All right, it's looking good. All right, that front hose leading from up here around the radiator hose underneath the belt on into the thermostat housing. Not bad. Okay. Are you guys ready for the big mod of the day? <laughs> All right, here goes. All in. Isn't that the story of my life? Let's go. Come on. There we go. Much like my career and marriage, it started off slow and tapered off. Okay, at this point, I've got this fitting secure here over to the degas bottle or radiator overflow. Here's the filter connected to the stock points here. And this flow comes down here. So we're gonna fill this up with coolant and watch the uh, watch the level and keep filling and keep filling and keep filling until it kind of levels out and then i'm going to put the battery cables back in fire her up and uh, we'll add any coolant we need to from there check for links leaks and then we're good to go as i'm filling up the coolant it dawned on me time to open these up when these are in line with the hoses, that means that they are open. And we need more. All right. With the battery plugged back in and the coolant level where it needs to be, the valves turned on and everything securely in place. We'll go ahead and start this puppy up top off any coolant we need to and see if there's any leaks.
I didn't see any leaks. Everything looks good. Everything sounds good. Um, I topped her off one more time just to uh, make sure that the levels were correct now that the coolant filter, which wasn't there before, um, is all filled up. And uh, yeah, I mean, it looks tight. It looks like it's leveled out. Everything's good. Um, I even took time as the truck was warming up to take the dirty coolant and put it back into the uh, new coolant bottles and I'll have those recycled. I'll bring those over to a recycling bin along with some uh, oil cans I have here. Uh, everything looks good. Everything's wired tight. So that's a wrap from another episode of 7.3 liter truck stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell notifications for uh, updates on new videos. And again, beard product ideas you guys got would be nice. Thanks. Another episode of 7.3 liter truck stuff out here.